Um, so in many, of, uh, in many cases, the metadata is actually the bottleneck. Um, for example, when you work with a lot of small files, if you have a directory where you're running a lot of creates or deletes of files, um, those are kind of the use cases where you, where you get bottlenecks of the metadata. And uh, a common solution to this is to do silos, um, right? Different workloads and different machines, but uh, customers don't really like that. Um, and the reason it's hard to scale metadata is because of the consistency requirements. Um, but it's definitely possible. And uh, usually there's kind of a trade-off between consistency and uh, performance in the sense that when you can't reach the consistency, then you have to stop and, and wait. Right? <coughs> this is the uh, famous CAP theorem. Um, but not all operations are, are equal in the sense of what you want them to, have, how you want them to behave. And, and I think we've, we've created a nice uh, a layering of different operations which get a good combination of trade-offs between the consistency that you're getting and, and, and the performance. Now, Everything we do is 100% consistent. It's just an, a question of what happens when you can't reach the node. What do you do then? Do you define it as failure and you need to pay some uh, price for recovery or you can do something else? Um, so we have three layers. Each layer uh, handles different operations. The lowest layer is what we call the ECDB, uh, the configuration database, which basically keeps a persistent state of uh, the configuration, configuration <laughs> of the cluster. Uh, the second layer is the ORC layer, which we mentioned uh, before, Ownership Repository Coordinator. It's an in-memory in repository that tracks who's the owner of what, and it's, uh, it's, it scales out by uh, sharding, okay? Because it, the operations there are on a per file or directory basis, there's no reason, there's no problem with sharding. We don't lose anything from, from doing that. And then the third layer is the ownership layer, which we've seen in the right example, which does the actual metadata handling. Now, the middle layer, the ORC layer, that's the layer that you usually don't have. That's, that's the layer that we uh, um, add, and that's the layer that allows us to do this co-location with Accessor, so moving things around. Um, it allows us to quickly recover files and directories and we can recover a specific file or directory. We don't need to recover a bunch of them at the time. We can say, we're getting an IO on a file. That file requires recovery. We'll recover just that one. And we'll see later that we don't even have to recover just, we don't even have to recover the entire file. We can just recover the objects um, consisting, uh, that consist of that file that are needed for the IO. So if we're doing a read operation, it needs just a file uh, mapping. We can recover just the file mapping and that can take up to tens of milliseconds. So if a node fails and then we're still getting access to the same files it was owning, we can serve those IOs very quickly. Um, and it also allows us um, to uh, get around uh, order of recovery. I would so, this pyramid. Excuse me? I'm sorry. I, yeah, I was just thinking I would invert this pyramid because the persistent state of the configuration of the cluster is relatively small amounts of data. Yeah, so the it ownership depends. Is, uh, you know, is a little bit bigger, and the ownership of the actual metadata is actually, you know, lots of activity going on there. Yeah, so, so I agree. Um, in, in the few slides, you'll see why it's like this, but uh, okay. uh, it's, what you said is, is definitely uh, also valid. So the, as you go up this pyramid, you get a higher rate of operations, right? So configuration changes are very seldom. Uh, open close a file, which is what we needed for the ORC uh, service, right? The first time you access a file or when you're done accessing it and you're releasing the ownership, that's kind of the rate that we're accessing the ORC. And then the ownership is every aisle. And for that, we want them also to have lower cost. So the topmost ownership one, we want it to be as efficient as possible. So, so it is. It's a local function call because it knows it's the only accessor of the file. It's the owner of the file and everything it does is consistent, so it can do all of its operation in memory. It doesn't need to talk to anyone in order to do it. Of course, if it's doing a change, it will need to persist the change. If it's doing a transaction, it might need to do this transaction with another owner, but in general, all of its operations are local in memory. Um, the ORC um, is an in-memory distributed consensus, so it's running on uh, multiple nodes, but it's in-memory consensus, so it does the two rounds of messages. Um, doesn't include any disk IO, and then the ECDB needs to be persistent, so it's similar to the ORC in the sense that it's a distributed consensus, but it actually persists its state. And the uh, consistency of the top layers is derived from the lower layers. So um, the uh, lowest layer, the ECDB, is resilient to um, F node failures if it has 
two F plus one uh, items, nodes in it, and also to total power failure. Then the uh, ORC is resilient to F node failures. Um, it's not resilient to power failure, but it's not a problem. If we have a power failure, we, we can reconstruct it from a previous uh, information we already have persisted. And the ownership, if we have a failure there, we will need to do recovery. So this is kind of the trade-off. If we have a failure, for example, in the ORC, a single node failure, we, everything uh, continues working. We don't need to do any recovery. Same for ECDB. Uh, for ownership, if we have a failure, we need to perform recovery. And this is kind of the trade-off that I mentioned before, where what is the cost of a failure compared to the common path? So for the common path, you want everything to be as efficient as possible. Um, however, you want to be able, when you have a failure, you want to be able to handle it correctly. So this is um, um, how we split the different uh, responsibilities. Now this specific layer, uh, the ORC layer, is on the one hand, its consistency is essential for the correctness of the, of the file system, right? Because it says who's the owner of what. If it doesn't say that correctly, if it says there are two different owners, we're going to get inconsistency. Um, but, uh, and on the other hand, it is resilient to node failures, right? So this is classical consensus kind of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a situation. The problem is that consensus algorithms are not uh, very good at low latency, um, consistent uh, uh, performance, especially if you have failures. Uh, so uh, we built uh, our own consensus algorithm, which we call uh, Bizul, which means uh, distributed or decentralized in uh, Hebrew. Um, and what you can see here is you can see Bizul is the middle one, and then you have on the left EPCD and on the right Zookeeper. Those are two um, open source um, consensus systems that are fairly known. And what you can see is you can see how they behave during a node failure. So if you look at the at our uh, consensus algorithm, Bizul, you see that when you have a node failure, um, there is a short period of time uh, of a glitch, about a second, and then it continues uh, operating as normal. If you look at Zookeeper, you'll see that there are about six, seven minutes, uh, seconds that everything goes a little bit crazy, um, and then afterwards it still takes some time for it to go back to uh, good performance. And then ETCD is uh, similar, um, takes it about uh, six or seven seconds before it goes back to normal operation. Um, now, how did we achieve this? Um, so Bizur is a special uh, consensus algorithm. It's, we use it instead of Paxos or Raft. Uh, Zookeeper is based on something similar to Paxos. ETCD is based on something similar to Raft. Um, and, excuse me, it's based on Raft. Um, and it's optimized to be low concurrency and uh, especially in continue supporting uh, this, low, concurren this um, low latency uh, during uh, failures. And the way it does this is by building um, um, the consensus on keys and not on the entire system. So Raft and Paxos basically give you a consensus algorithm that is consistent across the entire data model, but that's too strong. We don't need that. We need consistency on a key value basis. And by limiting the constraints on what kind of consistency we need to reach, we can achieve much better performance. So this is a consensus algorithm that is fine-tuned for um, file system or for metadata file systems. Um, and you can see it works uh, very nice. We've published a paper on it. It's online. You can type Bizur in Google and you'll get to it. Um, and it's open source though, right? It's not open source, but you can read the paper. Uh, um, yeah, um, so this is, this is one of our kind of like special ingredients, so we have an open source. Okay. Um, and um, it also supports uh, a special uh, uh, efficient cluster-wide operations like a compare and swap, which um, help us, again, get this nice performance. Okay, so let's look at an uh, example of IO and see where it touches all of these uh, different blocks. So uh, an IO comes in. Uh, we go to the ownership cache. Uh, in this example, we don't have any, uh, any entry, so we go to the ORC repository, um, and it's, we ask it who's the owner, and it will tell us B is the owner, and from now on, we're gonna talk to node B for all of the accesses to this specific file. Um, during the regular operation, we're going to, the, the owner is going to put journal entries all across the cluster um, as part of its uh, changes. Eventually, um, every so often it will perform checkpointing and delete them, but for, for, for the sake of this example, let's assume that they're still out there and it hasn't performed uh, checkpointing. Does each node have to have the same amount of storage? No, 
So they can be different stories. Yes. And, and you can have as nodes the SSDs without. SSDs are concerned, they can be different capacities yes. as well. Yes. And you don't even have to have um, you don't even have to have uh, storage on every node. So when we talked about that, this case of having a client that has um, right, like uh, you have a you have our software running in the client node. So that node usually will not have storage. It will just have the protocols and the metadata services running there. And you don't need to have an owner running in every node. You don't. But the ownership repository coordinator runs in all nodes. No, it runs on a, on a subset of, uh, so each, it's sharded. Each shard runs on, depending if you want a two-way replication or three-way. So for example, on a two-way replication, it will run on three nodes because a consensus needs additional. And on a three-way, it will run on five nodes. And then it's sharded, so each set of nodes can, um, can uh, participate in a different uh, org. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so when, uh, when for example, in, in this case, uh, the owner fails, um, now we get a new, uh, a new uh, operation on the same file. Now, as part of fencing the node out, uh, the nodes in the cluster learn about this, the fact that this node has failed. So basically, the entries in the cache are, are, are in a sense, invalidated. So we're going to go and ask the org service again, who's the owner? Um, now, in this case, what the org knows, it knows that this file has been owed by someone and that someone has failed, so it requires recovery. So what it will do, it will tell some owner service, uh, take the ownership on this file and recover it. And in this case, it will try and co-locate it, so it will tell our uh, node A uh, that you're the owner and you need to recover it. Um, and then it goes back to the ownership cache and just says, A is the owner, um, continue from there. Uh, what the owner will do now, it will, in its uh, leisure, start uh, getting, um, loading those uh, journal entries because they are the latest state of the metadata. So we, we need them in order to reconstruct the, the state of the metadata that we're trying to access here. Uh, and when it sees the I.O. actually coming to it, it will um, change the priority of this, of this recovery. So this is a recovery of a file which can take a long time. Now it sees an I.O. that is accessing specific objects within that file, so it will give those objects higher priority. They will uh, skip to the head of line and be recovered before we continue the recovering the rest of the file. Um, and the recovery is pretty simple. You, all, you load the, uh, all the latest version you have of the metadata object. It could be an old one. You load all of the log entries. You replay the log entries on the object, and then you get the most up-to-date object. And then, of course, you can serve, can serve the I.O. So for uh, read or write I.O.s, the most you will need to uh, recover is two objects, the file MD and the mapping that you're currently accessing. Um, and that can happen within uh, tens of, uh, of milliseconds. So even after failure, uh, we can start giving I.O.s uh, uh, fairly quickly. Um, okay. Questions about this? Um, now, of course, this is the worst case uh, scenario of uh, unplanned uh, failure. If you have a planned maintenance or if we're just doing uh, ownership movement because the load change, we don't need to go through this whole recovery. We can do things more efficiently and gracefully. Um, you mentioned the key value consistency right. of your, yeah. your Bazaar uh, approach. Yes. I didn't, I didn't see anywhere how that key value was maintained consistent across all the the nodes. How does it how does it actually work? Or is that in the paper? Or is it? Um, so how the algorithm itself works is in the paper. Um, maybe you can uh, um, restate the question somehow so I can try and. Uh... I'm just trying to understand if, if one of the nodes is updating a key value pair that mm -hmm. provides I don't know the directory metadata or the file metadata for a file. How are the other nodes? Uh, how are the other nodes guaranteed to understand that that data has been updated? Okay, so so let's. Uh, I'll try and answer it here. Um, so first of all, the the Bizor is is not used for um, the metadata service. It's not used when the ownership uh, actually changes the data in the, in the file mapping or file MD. It's used to say who's the owner of what. Okay, so it's that's the only uh, responsibility it has. And for that specific part, for saying who's the owner of what, it's, it's, it's a service that's run, for example, on five nodes. If it wants to change the ownership of something, it has to have a majority of those nodes respond, and that's the way, uh, in general, the Bizu works. So it's, like a, it's almost like a, a lock and a, a, an approach that all the, all the you know, consensus is, is available across n number of nodes that you've provided. 
before you pursue, proceed on the process. So uh, the, the ORC is used only to say who's the owner of what. Right. It's not used for the changes. So a new file comes in, right? So, so a new so file a comes in. It has to be assigned to this file. Yes. And it has to be updated across the five nodes. That yes, but it needs, no, it needs only a majority. Okay, it, the three nodes. That yeah, so it needs, it needs a majority out of the five. So it will send to all of the five. Once it gets a result from a majority, then it knows that, that this information is, is in there and you can retrieve it later and it will tell the node, okay, you can start the ownership on that. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, and um, about how the, uh, a specific owner maintains its consistency. So the owner knows it's the only node that is accessing it. So no other node uh, will change um, without consulting this node first. And the way it preserves consistency is by persisting the uh, uh, journal entries of whatever change it's performing. So in consensus terms, uh, the owner is a leader. It's like in, you have in, in Paxos and Raft, you have in any uh, uh, point of time a leader which can uh, um, uh, do things on, on, the, on the state. So the consensus is to decide who is the leader for a specific, the owner of a specific object, and that owner can efficiently uh, take action on that specific um, uh, object. And the directory metadata and the file metadata, which is quote unquote in the owner only really, uh, will get persisted to the various locations throughout the, the storage. Yes. And how does it, so when I come up after a, a node failure, how do I know where that file data and direct, you know, metadata and directory metadata is actually located in the, in the journal store? It's okay, so, so the, the objects themselves, the metadata objects themselves have a specific address, which is um, uh, computed somehow, but it's a specific address. Um, the journal entries are distributed across the cluster, so you will, you will need to go and, and read those. That's, I think, we've seen. So there's it. a specific journal orient you know, mapping that, uh, that exists. It's, it's uh, I wouldn't call it a mapping. You, you ask the, the different nodes in the cluster to retrieve the journal entries, and they, they, you tell them, I want the journal entries of this object, and they will, they will just give it to you back for that specific object. So, so this is very, uh, again, this, this aspect of being fine-grained, it's, um, you see it in all the different levels. So we have data structures that allow you to retrieve the journal entries of a specific object, not even a file, but just a specific object. So it will probably be just a few uh, tens of bytes or maybe 100 bytes from each node that you get back and you reconstruct your, your original data. And of course, when you at, at a background process, you will need to recover the entire file, which means recovering the entire object. And, but that's as a background process. It's not stopping the user. That's why we can return to service so quickly because everything is a very fine grained. The IOs themselves, the recovery, 